Hello everyone, uh, my name is Matt Sutter. I'm a senior research scientist at the Occlusion National Lab and today I will present you some of the challenges and requirements to drive workflows from the data plane. But before presenting these challenges and explaining what I mean by driving workflow for the data, from the data plane, let me tell you first what was the motivation for this talk. Let me start by recalling the traditional way we are all used to describe scientific workflows. We have a graph of computer tasks, which can be function or standalone executables, with flow and control and dependencies. This DAG is usually uh, directed and acyclic and corresponds to a single run of an application. The workflow usually takes uh, files as input, produces some intermediate files that are consumed by subsequent, subsequent tasks, and eventually it produces some final outputs that are kept and analyzed further to produce scientific results. Two main characteristics of such workflows are that the tasks follow read, compute, write models, and that computation time is usually dominating. This view of scientific workflow has been standard for the last two decades and led to the development of many workflow management systems. However, modern scientific workflow can be much more complex than that. In a recent study made in the context of the Integrated Research Infrastructure Program from the US Department of Energy, ESNet has analyzed and categorized many scientific workflow from various scientific domains and as we can see in this picture, they are indeed much more complex than the traditional ways of describing workflow. First, they can combine multiple data sources. We can have sensors attached to instruments, diagnostic attached, attached to complex species simulations, or ensembles of simulations. Then, we can aggregate all these sources of data within long-running experimental campaigns. Uh, the, this workflow can also include time-sensitive patterns, such as near-real-time analysis or the use of AI and ML models to analyze experimental data. These allow scientists to implement feedback loops to control, steer, or even stop the experiment or instruments when instabilities or misconfiguration are detected. And finally, we observe the emergence of digital twins that can complete and interact with traditional analysis to add new and more informed feedback loops at the campaign level. But what is really important in this illustration of modern workflows is the importance of data. Data is everywhere and really driving the production of new scientific results. As a consequence, the computational part of this workflow is no more the dominating component. Then we believe it's time to rethink the way we are managing scientific workflow. And what we are advoca advocating for is a better separation of concern across three complementary planes. First, we have the data plane that stores, streams, and transports data and metadata. Then we have the application plane whose components simply put in or get from data from the data plane. And finally, we have the control planes that connect services together and manages the interaction between all the planes. However, this organization poses a few challenges to traditional workflow systems. In a paper presented at the science conference last year, we identified five um, modern workflow motifs and their corresponding challenges. I will focus only on four of them today. And the first one is a tightly coupled HPC simulation that exhibit periodic data production, which differs from the traditional read, compute, write pattern I, I, I mentioned before for the traditional workflow. Moreover, this, uh, in this motif, uh, this uh, tightly coupled HPC simulation are augmented with loosely coupled analysis, visualization, and diagnostic, which can be dynamically added. This dynamic component is also really hard to manage for traditional scientific workflow managers. The second motif is the one of steering ensembles uh, using AI models, we, which requires to have a proper coordination between the HPC and the AI components especially in terms of accesses to the parallel file systems. Uh, recent studies showed that if you are executing together uh, an AI application and an a a HPC ap application, they interfere together when in, in their IO accesses and both uh, suffer from uh, performance degradations. The third motif is the uh, connection of instruments uh, to edge and HPC computing resources. And this motif rises additional security and policy concerns when crossing boundaries between different facilities. Moreover, in these categories of workflows, uh, usually have some tight execution time constraints. This is uh, 
typically the case where you want to uh, stop uh, the scientific instruments when you when you uh, and really fast when you detect a misconfiguration, for instance. And finally, the uh, development of digital twins uh, calls for a new command and control features to enable a better synergy and more in advanced interaction between the HPC and AI components. So this study led us to uh, list a series of requirements for the implementation of a workflow ecosystem that would be able to handle such modern workflows. The first requirement is to adopt a service-oriented approach to data management by abstracting data movement and storage from the complete task composing the workflow. These tasks just have to produce or consume data, and that's all. They delegate all subsequent I.O. operation and optimization to a dedicated I.O. framework. To this end, it becomes mandatory to go beyond the traditional file-only view and to generalize the use of self-descriptive data. This enables the access and query of specific pieces of information within large datasets. Then, with the explosion of the data production rates in the edge of Exascale and AI, it becomes intractable to process, move, store everything at full accuracy. Data reduction cannot be avoided anymore, but it has to be adaptive to provide guarantees on the accuracy of the reduced data and be fully integrated into the data plane. Finally, as a natural tool in experiment to XPC to experiment continuum, future workflows will be fundamentally iterative and event or human driven. Then, workflow ecosystem has to evolve from uh, building traditional static execution plan to more dynamic control with mechanisms such as hooks and triggers to drive the execution of a specific workflow. So in the paper I mentioned before, we provided details about tools developed at the Occlusion National Laboratory that partially address uh, these requirements. They constitute a first step toward an ecosystem to drive workflow from the data plan. But Many open research challenges remain, and I will conclude my talk by exposing a few of them. The first open challenge comes from the observation that scientists tend to conduct early analysis of data produced by large-scale HPC simulation, either on their own laptop, using Jupyter Notebook for instance, or on small cluster in the lab for visualization purposes. Then, there is a need, in complement of data reduction, to be able to efficiently query and access very specific subsets within large datasets. A second challenge comes from the complexity and dynamic nature of modern workflow and the complexity of the edge to HPC computing continuum. This leads to be able to take more complex decisions for everything related to resource allocation, scheduling, and experimental steering. This decision must be informed by advanced performance model, which are both proactive to build the initial execution plan and reactive to adapt to the execution of the workflow and the evolution of resource availab availability. And finally, with scientific data becoming the most important asset, it has to be preserved at all costs for the entire duration of a workflow or even a scientific campaign. Then, resilience becomes key with the challenge of being able to control the cost of replicating data and computation. Even though I only gave you a brief overview of how we envision the future of scientific workflow, I hope I convinced you in this talk that data will be the main driver for this kind of application and that there are many challenges uh, to be addressed in the near future. So if you have any questions uh, about this presentation, I will be happy to take them. Thank you.